Ooh, ooh, ooh. Big Fish ish. We got a new addition for y'all. Something that we may make a permanent segment. But um, we got the Big Fish politics. And I can't even say this is the first installment of Big Fish politics because we, we talk politics from time to time. Uh, we actually talk politics a lot. And y'all know I'm always roasting the Democrats. Well, I, you know, I get at both, but I especially target the Dems just because I feel like they're always full of some BS, um, especially when it comes to black people. Um, but I, I, yeah, I target the Dems. They always playing the victim card and uh, trying to play on people's emotions. And I feel like uh, when it comes to you know my community, there's been a lot of swindling um, and taking advantage of going on. So it is what it is. But neither here nor there, I'm actually going to do something a little bit different today. And I'm going to consult for the Democrats. I'm going to consult the Democrats on how they can win the black vote. And you're probably sitting there wondering exactly what I would be wondering if I was you, which is why would the Democrats need any consultation on winning the black vote? Why would they seek any counsel in that area when they've been extremely successful while doing absolutely nothing? Uh, they get a lot in return and give pretty much nothing. We actually all can learn a lot from that. But neither here nor there. What I see happening with a percentage of the black community is something that hasn't happened maybe ever in America. And it's especially happening among the younger black community, which is we're not off all that stuff that our parents were off. We're not scared. You're not scaring us with the same emotional scare tactics that you did our parents. You're not scaring us with, you know, to the point where we're just voting for the lesser of two evils. Uh, we're not, we're not, y'all ain't getting us with that. All right, y'all are not getting us with that. And like I said, the majority of the black community, the Democrats may feel that they still, uh, still own, <laughs> for lack of better words. However, that small percentage that I'm talking about, I see constantly growing. And the energy that I'm seeing is more towards one that is a lot less inclined to just vote for the Democrats because our parents voted for the Democrats and, and some of our grandparents voted for the Democrats if they were able to vote. And it, nobody's beat for that. So this is what's going to happen. We're going to move with a lot less emotion. We're going to look at things logically. We're no longer... I'm going to get caught up into, you know, what y'all tell us, what the Republicans did, how racist they are and all this and how they align with this group and all that. All we're doing is looking at policies. We're looking at who puts us, whose policies put us in the best possible position to compete in this capitalist system that we live in, period. We're not getting caught up with all the victimhood, all the, you know, oh, you'll give us money for this or you'll give us that or get caught up in the reparation talk and all that other BS stuff that's never going to happen. We're not, come on now, come on now. We really entertain conversations about reparations. We really entertain conversations about reparations when this group hasn't given us anything that they said they have probably for the last 20 to 30 years. Think about that. And y'all really sitting here entertaining conversations about reparations. Knock it off. Um, and I know they got some stuff going on in California and stuff like that, but whatever. Whatever. Neither here nor there. Y'all can listen to me if y'all want. I'm going to give y'all some game. All right? I'm going to give y'all some tips. Take it or leave it. So I'm going to give you, what, I got five here? I think I got four. Four pieces of advice that if I was y'all, I would take heed to. So if I'm a Democrat, how would I appeal? What would be my new way of appealing to black people 
especially considering this percentage of blacks that I'm talking about that are not our parents' generation of black Democrats. All right. Um, more of us are independent. Uh, more of a, a lot of us like the Republicans. So I, I can sit here and say, you know, um, it, it's, it's not about voting for who you like. Um, it's about voting for who puts us in the best position. But a lot of us even like the, the, some of the Republican candidates. Um, I tend to just remove the like from any of them, even though some Republicans, I'm definitely, I'm definitely somewhat, I'm, not, I'm definitely not a fan. I wouldn't say fan, uh, but they definitely appeal to me in ways that a lot of the Democrats don't. But let's get to it. I came here to give y'all four pieces of advice. Like I said, y'all could take it or leave it. If I was y'all, I would reach out to me right after this. Um, I don't know, and get me on somebody's payroll. I would, I would bring me in for, as a, as a uh, shoot, I do business consulting anyway. I would bring me in on the political side. Uh, I can give y'all a little bit more advice, give y'all a realistic perspective of what's going on and how we're not off any of y'all old tricks and tactics. But the first thing that I would do, if I was a Democrat appealing, trying to appeal and win the votes of black people, an admission of guilt. Now, what is that admission of guilt? I would admit that the Democrats are guilty of BSing us and being full of shit for years. All right, full of shit for years, especially when it comes to all the promises that have been made to black people, um, all the the fake programs that y'all put in play or everything that y'all want to talk about when y'all are up for election, um, stuff that y'all need to understand that y'all caused, even fixing the problems that y'all caused. You know, we, we hear here you got Joe Biden who was re one of the main people responsible for the crime bill, locking a lot of black people up. Um, you know, I don't even want to get into the specifics of it, but now he's trying to claim, I guess, when he was getting elected, that he would right some of those wrongs that he did with those policies and a lot of the stuff that he said. Um, all these different areas. Just admit that y'all have been on BS. Just admit that y'all have been BSing us for a while. Just admit it. Just admit it. You know, a lot of times we do wrong and we want to just keep kicking the can down the road instead of just coming out and saying, you know what, I messed up. We've been messing up and I'm taking responsibility for it and accountability for it. And just acknowledging that we did mess up and we did take advantage of y'all and we did BS y'all for years. That's number one. Number two, I would admit that shamefully, We've prioritized other groups ahead of you as if their struggle has been anything on your level. Now, what are these other groups that I'm talking about? And I don't want to play the game where, you know, we're competing with this group goes through, with that group goes through, because that's just not really my style. Like, it's not the whole victim style, but I'm consulting. So I'm talking to Democrats. So... I would admit that. I would admit that when you have, you know, a guy like Joe Biden, who, like I said, was a major contributor when it comes to the crime bill and destroying a lot of black families and responsible for black people being in the position that we're in. Um, he's, a, he's a major he's a major factor in that. The policies that he put in place. We always talk about policies and stuff. Well, his policies were are. I guess they were a reason why black families were destroyed then and it contributed and continues to contribute to a lot of the issues that we have right now in the black community where we're lacking uh, male leadership because we don't have fathers in the household. So when you have a man like Biden responsible for that and then he gets up and says that the LGBTQ community is his number one priority, that's a problem. And like I said, it may not be a problem for all black people, but it's a problem for a small percentage of us that is continuing to grow. So my advice to you all would be 
admit shamefully prioritizing other groups, initiatives, and agendas over ours. Because based on the history um, that we've had supporting y'all, blindly supporting y'all, blindly following y'all, if there's any group that quote unquote deserves, I don't deserves, I guess that would be the right word. Um, if there's any group that has earned, or I'm not even gonna say earned, I can't say earned, because we haven't earned it. Because earning it is making sure that you hold somebody's feet to the fire and hold them accountable. So I don't know what I, what word I'll say. I'll just say I guess deserved, even though I wouldn't necessarily totally agree with that word. But if there's any group that has deserved y'all to do something for them it's us it's us and y'all are going to learn that very quickly like i said it may not be all of us but through a small percentage of us that y'all need because y'all need all of us a small percentage of us can sway this thing one way or another so that would be my second recommendation admit that you've shamefully prioritized other groups agendas and causes and initiatives over ours number three I'm not sure if everybody remembers or got to catch Barack Obama's last speech uh, when I guess he was on his way out of office and he was bringing up the struggles that black people have faced in America throughout history. And he decided to reference other groups' struggles as well as in to compare them to say like, hey, black people, I know, you know, we always talk about our struggle, but but look at the Italian guy, he struggled. Um, look at the Asian guy, he struggled. Uh, you know, look at the Indian guy, he all these different groups. He started to mention, and all he was doing was trying to make himself feel better about not coming through and delivering on all that empty hope that he promised us when he was running. Remember he was running on hope, made all these promises, and now you finish off by saying, like, by pretty much, I don't even know what you were doing. Trying to play the blame game, trying to blame us for being in the position that we are in when we already know that. But then when you come out and say that you're gonna be the savior of this, and you know, you're, you're running on hope, and you know, you get everybody's vote just by being black, and shame on us for doing that. Uh, but you get everybody's vote just by being black and making these promises, um, coming across very much like a pastor and not delivering on any of them. And then you have the nerve to turn around and and make yourself feel better by saying that, oh, well, black people struggles. You know, everybody has struggled. So get your shit together. Pretty much that's what I took from it. That's corny. Don't do that. Don't do that. That would be my third, my third piece of advice. Do not do like Barack. Take accountability. Um, just like we need to take accountability, Barack in that leadership position should have taken accountability instead of trying to, I don't know, like act as if, you know, he, he, he did certain stuff for us and we just, whatever. Barack is Barack. I don't even want to get on him. But the third thing, like I said, that's what I would do. Take accountability just like we should. Show us how we should take accountability by y'all taking accountability, all right? Don't compare our struggles to everyone else's and say, oh, because they've been able to overcome their struggles, we should be able to overcome ours. Don't do that if that wasn't your energy throughout the entire eight years and even before that, are you campaigning for the, that presidential position that we put y'all in, all right? So don't, don't do that. So that would be number three. Number four, keep it 100. Keep it 100, and what I mean by keep it 100 is be real about why y'all haven't done anything for us. Be real with us. Literally, that's what I, if I was, if I was running for office, whatever position it was, and I was running as a Democrat, I would keep it real. I would keep it real, and I would say, the reason why we haven't done stuff for y'all black people, the reason why we haven't kept our promises to y'all black people is because y'all don't make us. Other groups force us to. Y'all just continue to support us without us doing anything for y'all and just keep believing in these false promises that all the rest of us Democrats keep, keep making. 
and y'all continue to support us blindly. Y'all keep walking by blind faith and supporting us with blind faith and supporting us. It, it, it's even worse than blind faith because we can see exactly that y'all aren't doing anything. So our eyes are open. It's not like we're blind and can't see what's going on. We can see what's going on. Y'all aren't doing anything. So it's worse than blind faith. But I would come out and say, you know what? Not only am I going to be honest with y'all and say that we haven't followed through with things that we said we would for your community, but I'm going to tell you exactly why. And by telling you exactly why, because y'all don't hold our feet to the fire, because y'all will just continue to vote for us, because y'all in any negotiation, which negotiations are when we're saying, hey, if you give us your vote, if you give us your vote, we'll do these things for y'all. In any negotiation, you have to be willing to walk away or else you lose. We haven't been willing to walk away. We haven't been willing to entertain other parties. We haven't been willing to entertain um, just another option, another way of doing things, another way of coming together and uniting and doing something else. We haven't been able to do that. That's what I would, I would tell them and show them exactly how to hold a party accountable to doing what they say they would. I would compare uh, the black community to the LGBT community. And I would say, this is the reason why Joe Biden comes out and says that the LGBTQ community is his number one priority. And I would break it down and, sh and, you and show the strategy that the LGBTQ community has been so successful in applying. Show their strategy. And I would be completely transparent with that black community. I would be completely transparent in saying these are the things that this community does. That's why we have to make sure that we follow through with the things that we, that we promise to them. And these are the things that y'all do, which is why we don't have to follow through. However, here are some ways that I can help to make sure that we are held accountable to doing the things that we say. Somebody says that. Somebody follows all these four steps. The first step was admitting that y'all been BSing us for years. When it comes to the promises, the second step is admitting that y'all shamefully have prioritized other groups ahead of us. The third one is don't do what Barack does and start playing the blame game and start deflecting and all that other stuff. And the fourth one is just keeping it 100 and explaining in detail exactly why the Democrats have not followed through with the promises made to the black community and show them how they can apply pressure in the right way to hold the Democratic Party to make sure that they are following through with the agendas that they put forth before us in order to win our support, period. And that's gonna establish a certain amount of trust because as much as people hate when people don't keep their word to them, you know, just by saying like, hey, I'm gonna do this and you know, a particular group or person doesn't keep their word, as much as we hate that, what we hate even more is the feeling that we've been taken advantage of, the feeling that we've been finessed, that we've been swindled, that we've been bamboozled. That's a terrible, terrible feeling. That's a terrible feeling. That goes above and beyond simply not keeping your word. But it's the fact that you're taking advantage of us and you're doing it intentionally. So when you can establish that trust with those four things that I just recommended to the Democrats, but it has to be genuine, though. And that's the missing ingredient if we haven't caught on yet. It has to be genuine. But that's the beauty in being transparent. Just keep it real. Just keep it real. Don't act. Keep it real. Be transparent and come from a genuine place. And then you will. And then people are more forgiven. People are more understanding because Y'all may not see it, but I'm telling y'all, there's a group of us that are no longer willing to just continue to support y'all just because. There's, it's funny because I guess we used to support y'all because we liked y'all. We thought y'all were cool. Clinton's cool. Um, you know, he's the first black president, Bill Clinton. Used to always hear that, whatever. Barack is cool. You know, Michelle's cool. All these different things. I'm being real with y'all. 
a lot of us don't think y'all are the, are the coolest ones anymore. A lot of us think that, yo, that other dude, that Republican or that independent, yo, he, he kind of cool. And the, pe and the ones that y'all do elect, not to say that y'all don't have any quote unquote cool candidates, but the ones that y'all end up putting in a position to run for president, let's say, it's not the cool ones. It's not the cool ones. And y'all gonna lose on a lot of our votes. So it is what it is. Like I said, there's no better way to gain trust than to genuinely acknowledge fault and to genuinely acknowledge the reasoning in those faults that you've made and to educate us on how we can do better and how we can get things done and use different examples from other communities in which how they've been able to get stuff done and teach that to us. So y'all do what y'all want. Y'all better give me a call quick though when it comes to this consulting because the next video is gonna be consulting for the Republicans. So the ball's in y'all court. I'll let y'all do what y'all do. But like I said, we are not our parents' Democrats, all right? If, if we're Democrats at all, we're not our parents, all right? We're not, you're not dangling the right to vote and slavery over our heads like you did our parents and our grandparents. We're not moved by that. It is what it is. We're moved by being able to compete and get results. All right, we want to take advantage of this capitalist society. If we're if we're here, then we want to understand the rules and we want to get good to the point where we can compete and win. And we're willing to vote for whoever and whatever party gives us that opportunity. Will it be y'all? I don't think so. Will it be another party? I guess y'all just have to wait and see. So with that, I'll let y'all go. Y'all can call me at 973. Nah, <laughs> y'all can get in touch with me. Y'all know. Y'all been texting me to support y'all weak um, Democrat campaign. So y'all got my number. But um, I'll see y'all soon. Ew.